Finally, today we have arrived to study number 40 from the series that I'm making of Louis Fillard's Studies of the Young Cellist, which has 60 etudes. And today we're going to have a great study for the organization in your bow, so for the right hand. And I will break things down for you, so it's going to be easy to understand this in theory and also pretty easy to put this in practice. I will show you the way how I would practice and approach this study over here. Hello everyone, I'm Ilya Laparev and I'm very glad to have you here on board with me in this VR journey. VR is really, really, really great to improve your cello technique and cello fundamentals. If this is the first time that you're visiting my channel and you find that the content I'm delivering to you very useful, then consider to subscribe. Well, now let's go take a look into this study over here. Fayar, Studies of the Young Cellist, number 40, study for the bow. <laughs> I just want to let you know that it's so easy to get confused in this study because it feels so unnatural to play these fast notes, so these 16th notes with the up bow, these ones. And don't be hard on yourself. So if it doesn't work immediately out for you, well, if this is a consolation for you, it took me actually three takes to get this right. Anyway, first things first, let's check quickly what we have here in the left hand. Let's discover, first of all, the notes that we have to play over here. You might wonder, but why? This is a study for the bow. Well, don't ask me why, just do it. It will save you tons of time and frustrations in the longer term. And in this step over here, you can do this with absolutely free bowings, free rhythm. I prefer that you do this slowly in order to discover the notes, which notes you have to play. And like this also, you're gonna be focused on intonation. Anyway, let me show you a couple of measures from the beginning so you have an idea how to approach this step. Good, I like this you do for the rest of the exercise. All right, let's suppose that you know already what to do here in the left hand. Let's go now to the right hand over here, so for the bow. So for the next step, which is gonna be for the bow, I suggest in order to put, to put the puzzle pieces together is to do this by parts. By doing this in parts, you will have an idea about the bow distribution and how this etude, so the study actually works. Again, I'm gonna show you the first couple of measures, how I would approach this, and you can actually copy paste them for the rest of the exercise. Let's do this. <laughs>
right so this was by parts now once you find yourself playing this with comfort we can now connect a few bits together so again i'll show you with a few examples <laughs> Right, the rest is up to you. So do this for the whole study and you will see and feel that things are gonna become easier and easier and more organized and disciplined. Now we come to the most important part of today's lesson. The key for success in the study here is, as this is a study for an organized bow use, it's very important to be organized in the movements in the arm and the hand. Only in the case when we have the quarter note, where we have the letter G marked, then of course we use the whole length of the bow. But for the rest, everything needs to be disciplined. So don't use big movements like that. <laughs> By doing that, that's the sound you will get. And that's not really the sound that you wish, right? The more organized, disciplined and less bow that you will use, the more focused and cleaner the sound you will get. Anyway, that's my way of approaching and practicing this study over here. I mostly focus on the organization of the bow use. And by doing this part by part, this will help to maintain consistency. Because a very common mistake is to have the first line very well and very stable, but the further we go into the music, the less consistent we get. If you like this video, then for sure you're gonna love the next video lesson that's gonna appear here in the end screen, which is a video where I talk about spiccato and I provide a very easy three-step guide, especially for beginners. And you're gonna be amazed that Spiccato isn't such a complicated bow stroke. If you enjoyed today's lesson, then give the thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, and please share this with friends or colleagues that might find this lesson useful. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lesson. Spiccato!